Hey guys, welcome back to Salem and in this video we're gonna be continuing uh, a little bit from the gardening video where we dealt with worms. Well, we've got a couple other critters that we're looking after now and it's the butterflies and the bees which uh, at this point have limited uses because certain things require much higher level skills but at this point in the game we could at least start our little collection and uh, it, it's still a bit of fun to, to do these sorts of things and there are still some very very useful benefits to starting to collect butterflies and bees. Well first of all I want to expand a little bit on our worm usage here. So I want to show you how I actually increase the purity of my worms and as you can see here my worms are now 37, 41 and 43 percent worms and this is quite easy to do. If you take an earthworm python or even a common earthworm you can uh, easily raise their, their purity if you were to buy a, a head of cabbage from the player stalls, one which is much higher purity. So for example here I've got a head of red cabbage which I bought for like 5 silver, pretty cheap, and it's 41% purity. But if you right click a head of cabbage and split it, you're gonna get plenty of leaves of red cabbage. So I'm gonna go ahead and place these all in there and I'm gonna put the earthworm python in the middle and there we go, surrounded with these leaves of cabbages and I think it, it focuses on the up, down, left, right. I'm not sure if it eats from the corners but it definitely prioritizes the above, below, left and right of these cabbages. And if you do this uh, with your earthworm pythons or common earthworms, you could just leave this for a day or two and, and just replenish the cabbage leaves if you have more and you can definitely raise the purity of your earthworm pythons quite significantly. So. Uh, I'm gonna leave that python there to eat that cabbage because hey, why not? We might as well increase the purity of our uh, humus. Anyway, the next critter I want to talk about are butterflies. Now butterflies are pretty straightforward. You can see this little butterfly cage I've got here which is a uh, sort of housing my butterflies. Well to to get uh, butterflies you just have to first of all get the skill. I always forget the name of this one. It's like L something lepi Lepidop Lepidopterology. Lepidopterology. And it's a pretty low level skill, under a thousand of any of your uh, proficiencies there. And it will allow you to craft and capture, or craft a net, to capture butterflies. And if you go to craft tools and bug catches net, you will see this thing here. Which it just takes one wooden handle and fiber netting. Fiber netting you could uh, quite easily use the, the cotton you're growing or uh, you could do the whole milkweed thing or get some spider abandoned cobwebs, stuff like that. And once you craft a bug catcher's net, uh, you can equip it onto your tool hand. So let me just uh, unequip my axe here, equip the bug catcher's net and there we go we can actually carry around our little bug catcher's net which can be used to capture butterflies. Now I've hidden the map here for obvious reasons but uh, I do have some butterflies flying around here. You can see there's one right there and you usually would click on uh, the click on the the map because it's much easier but I'm gonna try click on this butterfly here. Come on, there we go, got it, yes! So and it'll actually just add the butterfly to your inventory. Now when it comes to butterflies there's actually a collection going. If I right click on my little uh, bug house here, uh, let me you see. If you go to build tools and utilities there's butterfly conservatory. And building this is relatively easy but it's got, need, it needs one more fiber netting. Four wood blocks and fiber netting. Again things you should be able to make at this point. And if I right click on the butterfly conservatory, you can see I've got a collection of butterflies in there. And that's not by accident. You actually can't put in the same butterfly. So I've got already got a monarch butterfly in there, so I can't put in a second one. But you can see with each butterfly I add, it adds the butterfly efficiency by five. So I have uh, four, five, six, seven butterflies in here and butterfly efficiency is 35. And you can see I've already got a cabbage white, monarch, red spotted admiral, cloudless sulfur, little yellow spring azure and a wood nymph butterfly. So I'm not, I, I expect there's a lot more of these to collect but uh, the more you collect the more efficient it is and the whole purpose of having butterflies is actually to help pollinate your shrub and fruit orchards which is not something we can get right now. I, I don't have shrub, uh, let's see, shrub orchards. Uh, this is sort of the, the first 
thing that really requires any sort of pollination from butterflies or bees and it requires herbs and sprouts 11,500 so it is far far away from where we are right now but you can go ahead and start collecting these butterflies always useful and it's kind of nice having a collection of butterflies and uh, when you do actually get to the shrub orchards well hey you're gonna have all the butterflies on hand now for a slightly more complex critter I'm gonna go over to my bees and I built the bee skep uh, or the bee the sort of fake beehive right next to my bed because I thought it was a good idea to sleep next to bees because I am a smart man <laughs> so with these things you have to be a little bit more careful with them because bees are sensitive creatures but first let's have a look at the skill required you need to get uh let's see it's under b beekeeping and it requires 3050 flora and fauna 2200 herbs and sprouts and 1300 sugar and spice so it shouldn't be too far away from where you are already and if we go to build uh tools and utilities skep s-k-e-p this is a b skep and you can see when you place these things it actually shows a range and it it does the same with the 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 butterfly conservatory it shows this range this is the range where it can uh, sort of uh, reach in terms of pollination which isn't too important right now but you should be aware that this is its range and the butterfly conservatory is not as effective but has a longer range so good to know that but if I go ahead and build a bee skep, it requires 8 units of hay and 20 units of clay. And you should be able to make clay by this point. But uh, what's important is the hay. Now, uh, the bee skep actually has purity and it will inherit its purity from the hay you use. So you can actually go ahead and buy high purity hay. You can get 60 purity hay pretty cheap out there and eight units uh, it'll be less than 100 maybe 80 silver around there at, at the current rates anyway but uh since we're not really pollinating anything the purity of the skep isn't that important so for your first skep you can just go ahead and uh, use zero purity hay and just just to experiment but then the next difficult thing is to actually get bees. Well, where do you get bees from? And it's actually, uh, it's not so common, it's sort of uncommon, but the problem is you need a queen and some drones, and you sort of get these bees from picking up any sort of flower. So one good way of doing it would be to go uh, slightly north of Providence, the main city, and just, um, pick a whole load of daisies and flowers and stuff like that. I picked a bunch and I got a couple drone bees, but uh, at this point in the game, it's probably much easier to just buy it because you, you should have some silver uh, uh, hanging around and you can get drone bees for like seven to 12 silver and queen bees, I've seen them going for somewhere between 50 to 70 silver. Now. Uh, I'm gonna open up the Skepia, which is something you shouldn't do too often because it actually disturbs their production. But I'm gonna go and right click on the Skep, and there we go, our bees. And you can see there's a lot of drone bees in here, and it's because uh, they've actually been sort of producing drone bees. But to get this started, once you build your bee Skep, you have to put in a queen bee, and then you put in I put in four at first, but honestly, you should put in six drone bees just to be safe starting out because occasionally drone bees die as well and they, they just sort of disappear. So if you put in a queen bee and six drone bees, it'll start going You can and uh, it'll start producing more drone bees. It could also produce a rare kind of drone bee, which is a Delphic bee, which is an inspirational, and uh, it could also produce another queen bee. And if it produces another queen bee, it will actually produce uh, royal jelly. And royal jelly has some very special uses, but every time a queen bee spawns, it will spawn with royal jelly. But you should also remove the queen bee from the bee skep, because if you leave a queen bee in there, it will eventually leave with half of your colony. So if you get another queen bee, go ahead and build another bee skep. Don't, don't have two queens competing inside. If you know anything about ants or bees or anything like that, you know two queens is not a good idea. Uh, generally one leaves or one gets killed. 
So you don't want to leave a second queen in there, but the, and you can see if you to know if the bee skep is working, you can see down here there's worker bees. I've got 2,865 worker bees right now, and you can see the ether, the purity of this uh, bee skep is 66.28 percent, inherited from the the hay that I bought. Now, uh, currently I've got nothing to pollinate, so it's not all that useful. But if a queen bee does spawn and we get royal jelly, well, that royal jelly is gonna have uh, some special uses. And there's a reason why I started by talking about worms in this episode, because royal jelly is used for a few things, including some witchcraft things. I'm not too sure what, but hey, uh, witchcrafting is definitely a thing. And um, you could definitely sell it, but one thing you can definitely use it for is here. Uh, if you feed royal jelly to a common earthworm, it will actually transform it into an earthworm python, which is very, very useful. So if you starting beekeeping at this point is a minimal investment. And for the off chance that you actually get some royal jelly, well, you can definitely turn some of your common earthworms into earthworm pythons and increase the purity of your humus and then just make all your gardening and stuff much better anyway, which is going to help for a lot of other things. And uh, besides that, I'm just going to give a note on what else that royal jelly can transform. It can actually transform a dead bat into a giant bat, which you don't really want to do because giant bats spawn more bats. And you can also use it to uh, transform uh, dead wart bite crickets into a wart bite cricket mount, which is uh, something that uh, you don't really need at this point. But uh, I want you to be aware that that's a thing in Salem. You can actually create a cricket mount using this royal jelly. It, it's not just one unit, you've got to feed a few. You can, you, but you should really look that stuff up on the wiki if you want to know more about that. This is about butterflies and bees. Uh, so, uh, finally, if your bee skep, I'm going to open it one more time. You really shouldn't do this. Every time you open up a bee skep, it interrupts their work. Uh, but if this bar fills up, it's filling up with honey. So if you actually, uh, when you want, you can actually destroy all of, uh, well, not destroy, but take out all the bees you want. And if you destroy the bee skep, it will actually give you honeycomb and honey. And uh, well, honey from honeycomb, you can get honey and beeswax. And honey is actually something that you can drink, which uh, gives you the busy bee buff. And the busy bee buff actually increases your max humors temporarily so it's it's useful for if you drink some of that for combat or just some like heavy labor and stuff like that and honeycomb has various other uses as well like uh, i'm pretty sure if i go to craft and i think it's under let's see where is it it's under inspirationals i have a waxen candle it takes beeswax and fiber so you can get a new inspirational and things like that uh but in terms of uh, uh, increasing or changing your uh, common earthworms to earthworm pythons, it's definitely good because at this point in the game, you really should be trying to increase your max humors. And you can see from all my gardening in the last episode, I've got this whole collection of mushrooms. I've got pretty much every mushroom available here. I got my fruit section over there. I got my flower section over there. So getting the purity of these things is great because with all these mushrooms and my little cabbage farm over there, I'm actually producing shroom rolls, which are great to to sort of increase the humors beyond 20. All right, so that pretty much wraps up uh, the basics of what you need to know for, uh, well, a bit more on worms, uh, your butterflies, and the bees. Uh, so hope you enjoyed this video. And remember, if you'd like to support the channel and the game, do click the link in the description box down below. It's a referral link. You know how a referral link works. All right, so that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.